As Tuesday draws to a close, we have to acknowledge that it has been an extraordinary 24 hours here in Queensland. What we've seen today is 13 communities affected by a second round of flood events across uh, the southwest and southeast. Uh, that brings the total number of communities in Queensland which have been affected by floods since Christmas to a staggering 70. Of those 13 towns affected in the last 24 hours, five of them are being reflooded and re-evacuated for a second time. We, are now seeing, uh, we have now seen in 24 hours 1,500 Queenslanders evacuated from their homes and they are being accommodated in evacuation centres established in the last 24 hours. That we have six towns with evacuation centres accommodating, as I said, some 1,500 people. We expect that number to swell throughout the night as uh, Ipswich braces for a high, uh, high peak in the river of uh, close to 19 metres around midnight and swelling to some 22 metres tomorrow. So 1,500 people out of their homes, many more to follow them through the evening tonight. Unfortunately, we have seen the death toll rise again from 9 to 10 with the tragic death of a four-year-old boy swept away by floodwaters this afternoon at Marburg. Uh, the best advice we have at this stage is that this boy's life was lost uh, during a, an attempt to rescue him and his family. Equally, uh, I'm very disappointed that we've seen the number of people now reported missing rise uh, to 78 Clearly, as we get more information from families who are looking for their loved ones, these numbers are going to fluctuate. But we now have 78 people unaccounted for, we have 10 deaths, uh, and we have uh, at least 18 people uh, for whom we hold very grave concerns for their safety. These experiences in the last 24 hours uh, have seen uh, many people either experience themselves or witness uh, horrible trauma. Uh, we now have eight five-person grief and counselling teams ready and assembled to, for deployment in Toowoomba and Lockyer Valley tomorrow, tomorrow as soon as weather permits. We understand that people have in many instances not only been through traumatic uh, experiences themselves but they are in evacuation centres anxiously awaiting news of a loved one who remains missing. I wanted to reassure particularly the people of Ipswich and Brisbane this evening uh, that we have every available resource deployed to assist them over the next uh, couple of days in what we expect to be a very serious event. Our police, our fire and rescue, our emergency services have all temporarily ceased all non-essential duties and deployed people directly onto the front line. Major non-government organisations who are critical to this effort, such as the Red Cross, who are setting up the evacuation centres, have also cancelled all standard activities, such as first aid courses and the like, and deployed all of their staff to the front line of managing this incident. We know that we've seen Queenslanders uh, in dire and awful circumstances throughout the last 24 hours. We know that over the next couple of days, Many of us are going to be in frightening circumstances. Our emergency services personnel are ready to assist, but they need our cooperation. They need us to pull together as a community and they need us to follow their directions. Please make sure you are getting good advice about your suburb. Please make sure you're listening to all media bulletins. Please make sure that you are not out and about on the roads if you do not need to be. If we're all sensible, if we're all calm, and if we all uh, pull together, then I am absolutely confident that we are uh, here in Ipswich and Brisbane absolutely up to the challenge that we will face in the next couple of days. We have also seen the effort joined by many uh, volunteers and from New Zealand, including New Zealand uh, volunteers from the Red Cross. Uh, there are continuing circumstances unfolding this evening uh, and we will endeavour to make sure that we can keep you up to date as much as possible. I might invite uh, Ian Stewart to make any further comments. Uh, thank you, Premier, and good evening, everyone. Uh, obviously, uh, we're preparing now for the next 24 hours, the next phase of this uh, continuing operation. Uh, we're focused in two different areas, and that is to plan and prepare for what is coming uh, with the flood peaks uh, to Ipswich and ultimately into Brisbane itself. 
but at the same time we're also preparing tomorrow to get our police and emergency service personnel, particularly our specialist uh, USAR staff, the so urban search and rescue, and other other skilled operatives into the Lockyer Valley communities, uh, particularly Grantham and in the Murphy's Creek area, to uh, start the very gruesome task of having to uh, search for what we believe will be a number of bodies. Um, that will be a difficult time for our people, and I would plead with the public, if you do not need to be in that area, keep away. Let the emergency services and police go about their job in as much safety as possible. Thank you. You talked about 78 missing Premier, that number's gone up. Yes. Is that all in the Lockyer Valley area or is it some people in Brisbane as well? Uh, my understanding is that that is all between the uh, Toowoomba and Lockyer Valley as a result of the incident that we saw yesterday. And you talk, also talked about uh, you know, preparing for continuing circumstances or monitoring continuing circumstances. What are they? What we saw emerge uh, yesterday afternoon was an extraordinary event, uh, the, the, un the likes of which we ha haven't seen before and particularly never in Toowoomba. So uh, all I'm saying is we're now monitoring the weather overnight. We've got people, hydrologists will be working through the night tonight, modelling and remodelling what they're seeing in river systems coming into the Wyvernhoe area. Uh, so all of the data that we've been advising people will be continually re uh, refined so that we can continue to give you updates uh, throughout tomorrow. Uh, we now have a fully operational emergency centre here at Kedron and, as I said, the Bureau of Meteorology and our hydrologists are working literally 24 hours. Premier, can you give us an update of, of how many houses will be affected on Wednesday and Thursday um, and what that's expected to reach, the, the river that we expect to pick at? Uh, in terms of uh, some level of precision, the hydrologists are indicating that they are now reasonably, with a high degree of confidence, believe that the Bremer River in Ipswich will reach 22 metres tomorrow. Uh, that is more than one and a half metres higher than the 1974 flood in Ipswich. The 1974 flood saw 1,800 homes significantly affected in Ipswich. So we can uh, confidently, uh, given Ipswich is now more populated, expect to see more. Uh, in terms of uh, the Brisbane River, uh, they, are con they are, have a high degree of confidence that we will see it reach at least the 1974 level of 5.45 metres at the uh, Brisbane uh, CBD. Uh, in terms of so anything over that, they uh, would like to wait for 24 hours out from the event to be any more precise than that. But they believe that we need to be planning for an event at least as big as 1974 and to be cautious to plan for something bigger than that. Um, in terms of, um, you said earlier today that modelling had been done in relation to what the Toowoomba flood, what kind of impact it would have on Brisbane, can you paint a picture yet of what actually that might look like for us? To get a sense of uh, the impact of the Toowoomba event, uh, the Lockyer River uh, coming, comes into the Rivenhoe catchment. Uh, on any ordinary day, it would deliver uh, around, you know, when it was flowing normally, it would deliver about 500 uh, megalitres into that catchment. It is currently delivering about 2,500 megalitres. So that's certainly putting much more pressure onto uh, that system, and uh, we expect that it will have implications way down the downstream. But it's also been the very heavy rainfall that we've seen today that's contributed to this event. Uh, that has been, in fact, the main problem. The heavy rainfall into the catchment has seen all of those rivers and creeks and tributaries into already saturated ground.